What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. We got a few updates on the green truck. It's been running really good, driving really good. It does need a couple little things. One of those issues being brakes. So I already did brand new rear brakes on it. Those are good to go. I haven't done front brakes. I thought they were good when I had the whole front end apart. I checked them all out. They look pretty decent, but now that it's running and driving, the brakes don't have a whole lot of power. And I know the booster is good. I've tested the booster. I suspect the master cylinder is good because it, the, the pedal feels amazing. There's plenty of pressure. It's not like a mushy pedal or anything. It feels really good, but the brakes just don't have much power. I can't really get them to skid even on gravel. So I'm going to tear into the front end today. I got new pads and rotors for the front. Looking at the rotors, they look really glazed. So that may be the issue. If that's not the issue, it could be something to do with the brake lines. Maybe one of the brake lines is collapsed or something going on there. But I figure it's gonna need brakes eventually anyway. So I went and picked up brand new pads and rotors. We're gonna swap that on, try that. If that doesn't work, we'll have to dig further in and figure out this issue. So nothing special here. Just went to Napa right in town and got a set of rotors and their performer pads. So we're gonna swap these on. Hopefully we can work this out. Hopefully that'll fix the issues. When I pull these wheels off, I'll show you guys the rotors. They just look really glazed and I feel like that might cause this issue. Like I said, the rear brakes are all brand new, so I know that's not it. I've tested the brake booster, it's holding vacuum. Like I said, the pedal feels perfect. The pedal feels amazing, so I don't think it's something to do with a master or the booster, but I suppose it could have something to do with a master if there's a small internal leak or something, bypassing pressure and bypassing fluid. Either way, we gotta swap these out. Not too big of a deal. On these, I don't know why Toyota did it like this on some of their trucks, but you have to pull the whole hub off to unbolt the rotor from the hub. So not a huge deal. It really doesn't take that long. Pull the manual hub off and then we'll have to pull that big lock nut for the main hub and we'll pull the hub off, swap the rotor out. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, here's the rotor. So I just washed it. There's some rust on it, but they look really glazed and just, I don't know, they, they look glazed. So the pads don't look too bad. There's still plenty of meat on them, but either way, we're gonna change those. So what we gotta do, get the caliper off, get the outer locking hub off, and then we gotta smack these cone washers out of the main body of the hub. We can pull that off and then there's that big axle nut inside of here. And that's all we gotta do to pull off this whole hub. And then the rotor is just bolted onto the hub. So we'll swap that rotor out and throw it back on.
All right, we got the rotor swapped on. So now we got to torque the bolts that hold the rotor onto the hub. So those are 54 foot pounds. And I found the easiest way to do that is just to stick the hub through the lug nut holes in a wheel. That way you can hold on to it and torque it a lot easier that way. Okay guys, now we need to set the bearing preload. So how you do this with the axle nut, you want to torque that to 43 foot pounds and then we'll spin the hub a couple rotations. We'll loosen it, we'll spin it again. We'll do that twice. So torque it to 43 twice and then loosen it, tighten it to 21 foot pounds and then you can put the other lock washer on it and the other nut. Now we torque these hub nuts to 23 foot pounds. All right, we're all back together. So now we gotta change the pads. These pads are super easy to change. You just pull this clip out of the two pins on the back, that clip right there. You can pull these pins out that hold the pads in. And then there's this anti-rattle clip right here that just clips in between the two pads, just like that. And then you can pull these pads out when you're doing new pads, you're gonna have to compress these pistons in the calipers to make enough room for the new pads. So we'll get these pads out and then we can compress these with a clamp. Just make sure your reservoir up top isn't completely full. And then we can throw the new pads in and we'll be done.
All right, the last thing we gotta do is torque the caliper to 90 foot-pounds. Guys, I just realized something. Check this out. Check it out. We just hit 50,000 subs on the channel. You see guys, we just hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel. Freaking nuts. Feels like just not too long ago I was announcing we hit 10,000, which I thought was going pretty good then. Now we're at 50, we're growing like crazy. I wanna thank all you guys for the continued support on the channel, helping us grow. It really helps with all the builds and being able to actually go out and build these trucks every single day. So I just wanna thank all you guys for all the support. Also all the support on the website as well, all the bumpers you guys have been buying. As a thank you, I'm gonna put a coupon code on the website for 50% off everything today. I'm gonna to try to get this video out as early as I can in the morning, just so you guys have a better chance of seeing the video seeing the coupon and going on the website and saving yourself some money. Everything on the website will be 50% off. Hats, sweaters, t-shirts, bumpers, everything on the website, 50% off using the code 50K. Well, let's bust this other side out and then we can test these brakes, see if this fixes anything.
All right, we're all back together. Let's bring it outside and see what it does. All right guys, it didn't change much. It's still not, I can't even get it to skid on the gravel here. That's full brake right there not that great all right guys pads and rotors didn't really help at least the good thing is those rotors were a little bit warped when you're at higher speeds you could feel it pulsing in the pedal so at least that'll be fixed now and it's got brand new brakes all the way around i think it has something to do with that master cylinder kind of maybe bypassing fluid somehow an internal leak possibly so it's easy to change. The only really pain thing about it is you gotta bleed the whole system again. So just got back from Napa again, picked up a new master cylinder. So I was doing a little bit of research on these masters. This master I have on the truck, I picked up off a 95 forerunner with ABS. And you can see the end port here is on the top, whereas the non-ABS masters, it's on the side. So I don't know if that matters. I don't know if there is any different in function of the two masters. I did a little bit of research online and I saw one post from a guy that was claiming that the ABS masters have a different return rate pressure or something. So that could be the issue or it just could be a bad master. So either way, we got the new one, let's swap it out. What we gotta do first is bench bleed this thing. So I got these bleeding instructions with the master and they're saying to fill it with fluid, pull these plugs out until you get a drip coming out and then thread these in both sides and then pump the piston until you can't pump it more than an eighth of an inch. All right, we got the master bled, should be good to go. So now we just gotta swap it out. Just gotta pull these four bolts, holding it onto the booster, and then two brake lines. I'm going to have to bend these a little bit. Like I said, this port here is on the top, so I'm gonna have to kind of rotate it down, get it to connect down here. And then this one actually comes out straight, not at an angle, so we're gonna have to tweak a couple lines a little bit just to get it to fit. Shouldn't be a big deal though. All right, we got the master on and filled up. Got these lines fitting. This line looks a little bit funny with the little loop. This is uh, the ABS line. I actually got this from when I got the ABS master and I threw out the other line and the other master, the original master that was on this truck. 
It was a smaller one. This is the one inch bore. The other one I bought was a one inch bore, but I threw away the line. So that kind of pisses me off, but either way, I guess that doesn't look too terrible. So we got to get this thing bled now. I'm going to use this brake bleeder here. The nice thing about this is you can hook up the air compressor to it right here. You hook up this hose right here to the uh, bleeder valves on the calipers and the rear. And you just hook the hose up, open the valve, and you just let it bleed. All you got to do is fill the fluid up, make sure it doesn't go dry. So we're going to start the furthest away from the master cylinder, which is the rear right. Then we'll go to the rear left. We'll do the LSVP. And then we go front left and then finally front right. Quick question, have you guys ever been able to bleed your brakes and clean up the shop at the same time? If not, you need to go buy one of these things. I think they're around 80 bucks on Amazon with that special brake bleeder hose. And it is a time saver, it's a lifesaver. All you gotta do, come up here every once in a while and add a little bit of fluid. And you're not sitting there pumping it. You're not sitting there having your neighbor come over help you bleed your brakes. You just uh, add fluid and that's it. If you guys wanna check these things out, I'll have a link down below in the description box. Amazon, 80 bucks, time saver. It's also a oil extraction pump. So the long tubes on the side go down into your dipstick and you can pump the oil out that way, sucking it instead of draining it out the bottom. I mainly bought it for the TDI truck because the oil pan is not sitting like factory. So when you drain the oil, there's still quite a bit of oil left in the pan. So that's the main reason I bought that. But now trying to bleed brakes, it is a huge, huge time saver. Also, I'm not getting paid to say this. I bought this with my own money. I am not affiliated with them at all. I just really like the tool. Here we go again. To the floor. Still doing it, how? I'm as hard as I can press the pedal down and it won't skid, it's, it has no power. I don't get it. Well guys, I'm having a heck of a time figuring out what's wrong with these brakes. So I have pulled the master back off I bench bled it again. I put it back on. I bled the whole system again. I had my neighbor come over. We did the old two man trick with one on the pedal, one at the cylinder or the caliper, cracking the bleeders. There's no air coming out. I'm pretty positive we don't have any air in the system at all. And we still are having issues. So before, like I said, the pedal felt okay, but it didn't have any stopping power. Now the pedal goes to the floor and I can't get it to build pressure. It'll build pressure when the truck is off. It's a hard pedal right at the top. As soon as I start it, it goes to the floor. And I also did have another used booster I swapped in, did not change anything at all. I tore the rear end apart, checked out the rear cylinders. Those are not leaking. I cannot find any leaks at all anywhere in this brake system. So I ordered a rebuild kit for the calipers. That's the only thing else that it possibly could be. Unless you guys have any other ideas, I'm gonna rebuild these calipers and try that. They aren't physically leaking. I don't see any fluid at all on the calipers, but I don't know, I have nothing else to replace. The only other thing I could think of is that new master I bought is bad, something's wrong with that. But both masters I have do the same thing, so I don't think it's that. I'm leaning towards something in the calipers. So I'm gonna end this video right here. It's gonna be probably a few days to maybe even a week before I get the caliper rebuild kits. So I'm gonna end this video here. I really hope you enjoyed it. As you can tell, I'm a little frustrated. I've never had brakes kick my butt so bad. I cannot seem to figure this one out, but I'm gonna keep at it and we will figure it out. Well, that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.